Performing sensitivity analyses is a very important skill that a chemical engineer must have in practice if we are going to optimize a chemical plant design. And so what I'm going to do in this video is take you guys through a reactor optimization problem uh, in which we're trying to determine what is the best operating temperature to run our reactor at if we have a fully specified feed stream. And to do that, I'm going to be turning to Aspen and the end product of our sensitivity analysis is going to be some kind of plot in which we have temperature as a dependent variable, or I'm sorry, as the independent variable, and we will be able to see the product purity and the product flow rate as functions of our independent variable temperature. And uh, to begin with, to give an overview of what you're going to be seeing in Aspen, uh, we're going to have a fully specified feed stream entering a DME synthesis reactor, I abbreviate DSR. And in Aspen, uh, we use things referred to as blocks, and this block is referred to as RE Quill, an equilibrium reactor. And what RE Quill means is that we're making an assumption that we're reaching an equilibrium. And when you are operating at very high temperatures, reaction kinetics are much faster, and we can often use RE Quill uh, safely to make very good models. And in addition to that, we're going to have a one-to-one -one mole flow rate of carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas, and a temperature of our feed of 500K, though this isn't really that important because Aspen will force the DME synthesis reactor to be whatever temperature it is programmed to operate at um, over a given range. And then also we need to make sure that the pressure the one important thing about defining a feed besides the composition and flow rate uh, is making sure that the pressure is greater than the pressure that you operate your reactor at. Otherwise, um, you will have negative flow rates and it gets aphysical. Um, so it is very important to make sure that we have pressure set correctly. And then in addition to that, um, we are going to be ex performing a partial condensation of our uh, effluent. So the stream immediately exiting our reactor is called the effluent, and the effluent will enter a flash 2 unit block in Aspen, and flash 2 is also called PC1, partial condenser 1, uh, in my setup. And exiting PC1 will have a liquid phase, lic 1, and vape 1, the vapor phase. Um, and so examining how the product stream is changing as a function of the temperature that we operate our reactor at is the point of this analysis. So now we're in Aspen and we're going to actually perform the sensitivity analysis. And so the first step you're going to take is tell Aspen what chemical species we are going to be interested in. And you would have an idea a priori what chemicals are going to be present in your reactor from literature, you can look it up on Google Scholar. In this case, we're doing a DME synthesis. So we know that methanol, carbon monoxide, hydrogen, dimethyl ether, water, and carbon dioxide are all gonna be present. So we put this into the components section of properties in Aspen. And then after we've done that, we're going to go to simulation. And in simulation, we will view our main flow sheet and set it up properly. And so we're using the RE Quill block for our reactor, our DME synthesis reactor. And because we're operating at high temperatures, this is a pretty safe assumption. We are also going to be having a partial condenser immediately after our, or a partial condenser that processes our effluent stream. And LIC1 will be the product stream that we are interested in analyzing to check how many moles of DME are we able to sell as well as what is the purity of our product. And so um, this is what the Aspen model will look like. The next step we're going to do is perform the sensitivity analysis on the DME synthesis reactor. And I should also note that in this flow diagram, I'm operating this partial condenser at 50 bar and 300K. 
and we're operating the DME synthesis reactor at approximately 50 bar and we're going to be varying the temperature. So if we double click the DME synthesis reactor and we click on the sensitivity button here under the home tab, we're gonna click on new and we can call this whatever we want. I'm gonna go with a generic name here. We will specify what the independent variable is for our sensitivity analysis. And in this case, it's temperature because we want to see how purity and flow rate are impacted by changes in temperature. So we're going to click on new and we're going to define a block variable because um, our, our equal is a block in Aspen and we're going to be changing its temperature. So the domain, the DME synthesis reactor, we're going to change temperature and I'm going to be working in units of Kelvin. And the temperature range that I'm going to be working with is going to be from 400K to 600K. And I will tell Aspen to calculate the effluent conditions for 15 data points. And we have now fully defined what our independent variable is. And now we will define what our dependent variables are that we want Aspen to tell us. And so the first one that I'm interested in is the DME flow rate in the LIC1 stream because that's our product stream. And so I will define this as a mole flow. And we are interested in the LIC1 stream specifically the DME product. And I am also interested in the DME fraction of our product stream. And so I'm going to define the type to be the mole fraction of our product lick one stream. And the component will be DME again, because that's what we can sell. And now what we're going to do that we've fully defined the independent and dependent variables is tell Aspen how to output the data. So I'm going to tell it that column one, I want to be the variable one, um, which was our independent variable. I'm going to tell it to make column two, the DME flow and column three. I want that to be the DME fraction is our product purity. And you can just double check these names. You can call these variables whatever you want, but it is best to choose things that are descriptive. And so now that we've done that, um, we're going to run the Aspen model. So you just click on the run button here. You can press F5 and it will let you know if there are any errors present. And in this case, there were none. So now we can view the results of the Aspen uh, calculations and it will tell us in degrees Celsius what the DME flow and fraction were of our product stream. Uh, and so what you can do at this point now that we have the tabulated values is open up MATLAB to present your data. And in this case, what I did is I copied the columns in as vectors for temperature, DME flow and DME fraction. And then I plotted them with temperature as the independent variable. And uh, after we run this MATLAB code, what we find is we get a plot like this and we can see how altering the temperature of our DME synthesis reactor uh, is impacting the product stream. And so to do a little bit of analysis in this, what we find is that we never want to operate above, call that 270 degrees C because there is a dramatic decline in the amount of DME that we're able to produce. And we also get diminishing returns in terms of how much DME we're able to produce as we cool down our reactor. But what we do find is that we get better purity of DME in our product. Um, and this comes at, uh, the cost of um, jeopardizing the equilibrium assumption that we were able to make previously. 
if we operate at very low temperatures, what will happen is that the reaction kinetics will slow exponentially and the it will take infinite amount of time for them to reach equilibrium, which will jeopardize all of the assumptions we've made in our model. And so in practice, if you were to tell someone what the optimal conditions are, um, we would see that a, a temperature range from approximately 230 to 270 gives us the a, a fairly good um, DME flow rate, as well as a fairly high uh, can, uh, purity. And depending on how difficult it is to extract DME, you may want to favor running the reactor colder, but this will come at the cost of jeopardizing um, an equilibrium assumption that we're making. And so this concludes uh, an introduction to a sensitivity analysis using Aspen and MATLAB to plot our data. I hope you guys find it useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.